I get a lot of requests for cool sewing projects for guys, and while looking at good ideas, I found the cool cork fabric craze going on. Today we're doing this awesome streamlined wallet. Let's get started. That's right, I've been experimenting with all kinds of cool ways to make a very streamlined wallet. I don't like having much in my pocket uh, at all other than a little bit of cash. Well, if I'm lucky, I got a lot of cash, right? Uh, uh, ID and a couple of debit cards is really nice to do. Now, cork is a fantastic fiber to be working with and it's great for a bunch of these craft projects. And the wallet I made, I like the black canvas from James Thompson and a little bit of just a, gosh, a scrap from your stash, just a little bit of one inch trim here. Um, I'm showing us today how to do it using the gray canvas because I think it'll translate better on film and I'm looking forward to seeing how this comes out with the cork on the back. Now it's super simple to make. You're only going to need four pieces. You're going to need three canvas, maybe a fourth if you want to do an all canvas version like this. Okay, but today I'm showing you how to use the cork. So we're going to do the cork version. So I want you to have three pieces made and these are going to be seven and three quarters inches by three and a half inches and you'll have a fourth piece made exactly the same size out of cork. And if you miss those numbers, don't worry, just bounce into the link below. We've got a wonderful printable you can follow right along, right? Now, the next thing we're going to need is we need a one inch trim piece. And with my one inch trim piece, what I did before I even unfolded it is I'm just going to subcut these down into smaller little strips so they're easier to manage. And these pieces I'm going to fold so there's no raw edges and trim out the top two pocket pieces. Whoops, and I forgot to cut that side out. No problem there. So what we're going to do, we're going to head to our ironing board. And the first thing is we just want to press this in half to set our center line. So first I do that, and then once that, I come back in here and I start to set the raw edges up into that center line so that I can trim out the top of the canvas. And the reason we're doing this, let's talk construction a little bit. Remember, I'm doing streamline, so I'm trying to figure out and engineer a wallet that will have as little bulk in it and it seems as possible. So I didn't want to fold over my canvas. I want to trim it out with this lighter weight fabric, but I also don't want to have any raw edges showing over time because I'm going to be pulling my cards in and out of these pockets quite often. Okay, I'm going to let my iron just heat up for a second because we're going to fold this over for the last step because this is where we're heading. We're going to put this trim, like I said, right along the top. We're going to talk about these little tails here. And those little tails I use to help get started because this is some micro sewing we're going to do. And if we have to have a hard part in the project, this is probably it. I mean, ironing it in half because it's such a tiny little strip. But boy, it sure looks good when it's done. Okay. Easy like that. Now. We're going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm going to need to do this done to two of the pieces of the canvas for the pocket. So I'm going to do the second one right now. We've got the first one made for you. And as I said, I start with that little strip out just far enough that I can get a really nice bite on the blue fabric or my trim fabric. And I'm trying to set that needle right along that folded edge. And I also have increased my stitch length just a little bit because this is a decorative stitch as well as a constructive stitch. So I want it to look awesome and I've got a matching thread in the bobbin. And now that I'm approaching onto that canvas, I'm gonna really focus on what I'm doing. And I also don't wanna pull tension on this trim piece, because if I do, it might cause the top of the wallet to bow just a little bit. So we wanna do no pressure, just easy guiding. And I'm stitching through the top and the bottom part of that trim, I hope. <laughs> Notice the word hope there. If you don't catch the bottom layer, I do recommend you unstitch and try it again. And you're doing such small pieces of fabric, if you ever have to just start completely over, it won't take you long, promise, I know. Okay, so now once these trim pieces are made, uh-oh, should we check? I haven't looked, I'm nervous to check. We're gonna do it anyways. Awesome, we got all the edges, perfect. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to trim these pieces down to make the pockets. So let's take those little tails off. first. And then what I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna measure from this top edge right here down. The first one is gonna be two and a quarter inches. Two and a quarter, double check. And I'm gonna trim this, that's the first pocket, okay? And then the second one, let's take those tails off. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, now the second one I'm gonna measure down from that trim, and we're gonna go two and three quarters. And the reason I did the trim first is I, that way it looks really square, really nicely constructed, even if the trim didn't go on perfectly straight. Now it's straight to the pocket, right? Now, what we need to do next is we need to go ahead and set these stitches in here so that we can create the little double sleeve for the card area, but we don't stitch it close so we can fit the cash in when we're done. So to do that, I'm taking the now smaller piece and I'm setting it on the top and I'm gonna find center. Now center is found by folding it in half <laughs> as I walk to the sewing machine. And now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna swing my edge guide out of the way because it's gonna be in my way possibly. And I'm just gonna start, and I'm not starting on that center fold. I'm starting just a few needles width over. And I'm gonna do both lines of stitching, starting at the bottom up. And then right as I hit that blue trim, I'm gonna back stitch a couple times because there's gonna be a lot of pressure there over time. Cut my thread. Now I'm moving down to the other side of that fold. And I'm doing it again. Couple of those back stitches. So it's really awesome. Okay, now what we have to do is we want to think about how this is going to really physically work out, okay? So what I need to do is I need to have my cork, which is going to be the outside of the wallet like this, right? And funny enough, I got to think it all away and I start with the cork, but I have to come and remember that this is going to be facing canvas on canvas. So if I have all three layers here and my cork facing down, I am technically right sides together and I'm ready to sew around all of this, leaving about a three to four finger opening in the top because we are going to turn this back right sides out. Okay. So what I actually do with this is I make sure all of my fabric is lined up really nice down here as I approach the machine. And I am gonna swing the edge guide back in and a quarter inch seam is all we need for this. Okay, so let's take a second and make sure everything's perfectly lined up. Wonderful. And then instead of sewing around all four sides, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on that bottom edge back stitch all the way off the corner because this way I'm securing everything at once and this cork is just so easy to stitch through I just love it okay now at this point I'm coming off of the bottom corner back stitching back stitching at the cross too because we're going to cut the corners of the wallet off so it's easier to fold but for up here, I'm just going to back stitch till I'm at that quarter inch mark in my brain, spin it, catch it in there. And then I want to obviously lock in that stitch at the end there too. Now, if I have to, I can flip this over so I can do the same thing, but from the other side, lock it in, up we go, lock it, but just back up for our quarter inch, swing it around, catch that extra stitch there. And then as I come through, and like I said, make sure you leave yourself enough room to make it easy to turn right sides out. Now, the next key to making this work sharp is I'm gonna dog ear these corners. So what I wanna do is right across, just, just really close to where those threads cross. I just took that corner off, here, 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 there. And now we're gonna just reach in and we're gonna start to, and I know it might feel weird, but just push it through, push it through. And I have been playing with this cork for a little while now. We even took a piece and just walked around all day with it wadding it in our hands just to see how everything's going to work out. And I'll tell you what, it is some great stuff. But I better pay attention to what I'm doing here because one of the things I notice is I often start turning it into the top pocket and I panic that I've stitched it wrong, but I haven't. I'm just not pulling on the right sections. Now, 
I like to grab that trim and pull here. I'm using my fingers at first to set the corners. And then of course, you know, I'm always bragging about my new shark applicator. And the shark applicator is a fantastic corner turner as well. So once I get the meat of this like this, then what I can do, come in here. Now, I don't even know if I should teach you this because it could be dangerous, right? There's a blade inside of there. But put your cap on your shark cutter, hold it like a dagger, I guess, and then you can come in here and you can poke at these corners just like this. And the bottom corner, due to some of the layers of those pockets, is gonna have a little bit of a rounded curved look. And that top corner, you can get like perfectly square this way. There we go like that, come over here and work this. And then as we're finishing, we're just gonna top stitch this thing closed to finish it all off. And when I'm doing that, I'm gonna run my stitching right along the edge. And I'll be ready to show you that here in just a second. And that's how we catch that opening too. And we're all but there. But you really wanna take a good, slow approach, get your corners awesome, because that again helps eliminate some of the bulk and we're doing a streamline wallet here. Okay, now if you were handling it a bunch, you may wanna come in here and hit the canvas side quickly um, with your iron. And the other cool thing about the cork is you can certainly iron it or near it, I guess is more importantly. Some fibers that are special like that may melt. This one does not and I'm gonna sneak the iron, I don't even know if you can see me, but I'm sneaking the iron up in this corner here to press that canvas down so that as I top stitching it, it's working for me. And then as I come over here to the machine again, the first section I wanna capture is that opening. And I wanna stitch as close to the edge, let's trim any of those loose threads that might be hanging out, because this is where it goes from okay to awesome, and we want awesome today, folks. Here we go. So now I'm gonna start just a little ways back on my top stitch, and I'm like right on the edge, right there. I'm gonna take just a couple of stitches to lock it, but I'm gonna catch that when I come back around. We're going all the way around this time. And at the top corner, I'm just gonna pivot, but at the bottom corner, I'm going to shape it. I'll show you what I mean here as we get there. So as we come around, I'm gonna come, and that rounded gives me about two stitches worth. One, two, well, three. And then I can spin again. And you're awesome. Okay, and I'll show you that here. And we're gonna go stitch, 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 catch it, and then up that edge. And right there. We'll tie it in, I'll trim those threads, I'm gonna stuff it up with all my wonderful things and slide it right in my pocket as I get ready to make some awesome cool cork tutorials in the future because I love this stuff right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.